Hi, this is Cheryl for Bayer's Pampered Stampers. Welcome to the virtual demo this week. Um, I have two really fun cards to show you how to make. They are both lawn fawn cards. Big surprise. You know I'm a fan. They both use the Magic Iris camera add-on die to make really cute interactive cards. So the first one uses a traditional Magic Iris. That's the centerpiece here. And you can see opens and closes to show you that fun little image in the center. You can use that image, you can use a photo, you can use anything you like. The second one uses an add-on to that add-on and it gives you a pull-up that delivers an instant photo. Isn't that just darling? This has no magic iris in the center or anything else. Super, super simple to put together. This one, even though it uses the magic iris, um, could be done without the iris piece. You could just put together a regular camera. So the magic iris camera add-on is just a really fun camera die too. So let's take a look at how to make them. They're surprisingly easy. I know I say that easy peasy all the time, but they're really well thought out and super, super simple to do. You just follow the steps. So here we go. We're gonna start, set the cameras aside for a minute here and start with the magic iris piece in the center. You may remember I demoed this a while ago. Um, but it's time to do it again. We start out cutting the pieces we need. We need three circle pieces that are kind of plain. They look like this. One of them will recut using a die included with the set. They call it the nuclear reactor piece, the flux capacitor. I kind of call it the funny looking piece. I think that's the proper technical term. So we're gonna use the funny excuse me, the funny looking piece on this, you just put it cut side down on that circle, you can see it exactly fits. And this is what it's going to do for us. It's going to deliver a circle that looks like this. So I now have three slots and I have some stitching marks at three different places on the circle. So I've got three of those. I need three support pieces that look kind of like this. There, again, there's a die for that. And I need three bananas or three sausages, whatever you want to call this piece. That's what it looks like. So easily enough, we're going to start with this piece that we cut with the funny looking piece die in the set. And we're going to grab one of the bananas. We're going to put the tab in the slot, flip it around, push it back, and it's in place. It should exactly line up with the circle here and here. Now, until we get that sort of tacked into place, it's going to shift a little bit, and it's okay because you can always move it back easily. We're going to do that same thing around the circle. So put the tab in, push it to the back, and it should be pretty much in position. And here we go with the last one. Put it in, slide it back, and there's my circle. Now you'll notice with the circle, you can see edges of those blue tabs sticking out. Don't worry about that at this point. We'll take care of that later in the construction. The one thing I want you to notice, and I'm going to bring this up and hopefully the camera will focus enough that you can see it. Each of the bananas has an X on it. So X marks the spot. There we need glue dots and a specific size of glue dots. We're looking for the 3 inch or five millimeter, whichever measurement is on your box, that's what you need. And we're going to take those Sorry, I'm having a little bit of blue dot issue here. And we're going to place one at each of the three X's on those bananas. So three glue dots at this point. There's one. You can't see these plastic little liners that are making me crazy right now. Sorry, I bumped the camera there.
here's two. And here's three. Again, no bigger, no smaller. This is exactly what you need. And it suggests to follow the instructions so that your magic iris works as well as it should. Now I'm going to grab onto this and make sure everything is still lined up well, which it is. And then I'm going to take a plain circle and I'm just going to lay it on top, matching it up with what's going on there. So my glue dots are sticking to that, not really anything else at this point. Now I'm going to flip. And if you can see when we ran the weird looking die on this, it did the little slot cuts, but it also did some marking here with stitches. That's what we're after this time. We're going to take our support pieces and add just a little bit of glue runner to about half of it. And then place that down. There's a circle cut on the end of that so that it matches exactly into that circle. Who thinks of this stuff? I mean, we're lucky we had an engineer design this. It makes them super easy, but also very functional. Kelly's very, very talented. Kelly is um, obviously with Lawn Fawn. So I've got all three of those support pieces in place now. That's what my back should look like. Once again, I'm going to flip it around to the front. Now we need to put the shutter piece on. And this is what I'm talking about here. I don't know if that's the right term or not. Probably isn't. It's the pull lever. Um, usually before I install this, I put the decorative piece on top. The decorative piece they design usually has an arrow in some way, shape, or form that tells you how the lever should be pulled or that it should be pulled. Sometimes we don't even know that looking at a card. So I usually put that on first and then it's easy to put on and there's no problems later. So that's what I'm dealing with. I'm gonna pick one of these supports and it doesn't matter which one, they all will work. It's just pick one and usually easiest to put one facing you and we'll work with that one specifically. I'm going to put glue on about half, or excuse me, tape runner, on about half of this pull tab. It is going to match, the curve in this is going to match exactly the curve in the center. Where I want to place it is exactly beside that support piece. So when you look at it, you should see a V right between these two. So very close, not exactly on top of it, but pretty darn close. And that part's done. So far is still really not all that hard, just a few steps to remember. Then I'm gonna put my last circle on top. And I'm gonna take my tape runner and I'm gonna put glue at the ends of my support pieces. Now this part, you want to make sure you're not being too tight about this. You want to just sort of gently wrap these around and toward the center of the circle. They're not going to meet the center of the circle, and that's okay. They're not supposed to. So just gently leave a little space so your mechanism will work. Push them down into place. Then we're going to flip it over one more time. You can see I still have my little tabs sticking out the side here. So I'm just going to take and fold these tabs over to get them out of the way. Now I should be able to take my magic iris 
and open and close it. The first couple of times are kind of scary because it doesn't look like it should work, but guess what it does. Now I'm gonna flip it over because I want you to see the back. Those tabs have to keep moving, so it's really important that however you attach this in the back, you only put any glue or adhesive on these three support pieces. Um, and we'll do that later when we attach it to the camera. So let's go ahead and work on the camera piece. Um, my camera's gonna be blue, kind of like the one in the photo here. We aren't gonna do quite so much decoration, but I'll show you a little bit how the decoration goes. The die piece itself is pretty detailed. As you can see, there's lots of stitching in it that will give you guidelines for different things. There's even a divot in the side that's going to show you where a little flash piece goes. Oh, it's not the flash piece. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. A view window maybe, but there it is, and it's marked for you. Um, I went over it in pencil to make sure that it shows. If you want to do something decorative on the face of your camera, what you're going to want to do is cut a second camera, and then you can use the stitching lines that show up either to hand cut or to um, cut on your machine, on your paper trimmer, caught up with machines here, um, the center of the camera out so you know exactly where that piece goes. If you want top and bottom pieces, you can do the same thing. You can cut those out. I kind of decorated my camera here and I'll be doing this one kind of like the old fashioned ones that had the leather cases. So you, it always sat in the leather at the bottom and the leather piece was at the top. So all I'm doing here is cutting off the top and bottom at the stitching. Again, very simple because I have the guidelines. I previously cut out the top and bottom pieces. These I don't cut the full camera for because you'd have that whole waist of the center. So I just set the die on the edge of my paper and cut the bottom strip and the top strip and then just trim them as I needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this center strip in first. Although it doesn't really matter too much, I try and make sure my bottom strip is just maybe a little bit above the stitching so that I can cover the joins on this. But again, everything's marked for me, so all I've got to do is put it in place. If I didn't have a camera in my eyes, I probably could see a little easier to do this. And then I'm going to put adhesive on the top and the bottom pieces and get those going. So I've got a decorated camera pretty quickly. This one, I cut some palm trees from a palm tree border and added those on just to make it look a little cuter. You can do anything you want to decorate these cameras. There's so many fun things that you can do. Um, I will point out, there's this little hole in the side, which is functional. I'm not sure why. Um, some people will just put a piece of paper behind. You can see I put um, the red shiny paper here to make it look like a red dot, like the camera was in use somehow. You can do almost anything you want. Um, this die would make a really, really cute mini photo album. And if you chose to do that, perhaps you'd want to use that to put the ring through to hold all your pages together. But anyway. Um, so there we've got the basic camera construction. We've got a little bit more decorating to do, but right now I'm going to go ahead and add the magic iris piece where it should fit. Your, you want your tab to be up here to this side, but you want to make sure that when you put it on a card, it's not going to extend over the edge. 
because otherwise A2 envelopes, you know they're tight, you're not gonna get it through. So just about that position is going to work for you. Sorry, I should have put an extra piece of paper here. Now to attach it, I can put adhesive all over this front part. There's no moving mechanism here, so it's really not gonna matter. I'm just going to add the adhesive and go. I'm, again, I'm going to do this while the window is closed because I want to make sure that my pull tab lines up where I want it to be. Sorry, I'm a little off camera there. And I'm just going to place it in place and press it down. And it fits entirely inside. You'll see it's not extending anywhere. Um... Now to finish decorating the camera, there's two or three little pieces that go with it. There's this little square, and honestly, I'm not sure what all the pieces are. I'm sure they have function. I'm not a camera person, so I don't know the technical terms either, sorry. Um, but this little piece fits in that square that I told you the die marks for you. I can see it faintly here. I know you can't see it up here, but I'm just gonna place this into that area. And that part is done. This I'm pretty sure is the flash. So we're going to finish the flash assembly by adding some adhesive to the top. We'll add the bar here at the top. This is really old school camera time. It's been years since I've seen anything that looks like this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to the bottom here. So I can attach it to the side here. And my camera is pretty much assembled. Again, I might choose to put something behind that little hole, either matching or contrasting, whichever way you want to do it um, to make it work out. Now, when we're ready to put our little image on the inside, what you need to do is to open up that iris and then you can drop the image to the inside you're going to have to push around and poke around a little bit to get through all those iris layers and get to the bottom and sit on your card because that's where you want to be if you have it up too high it's going to block your mechanism And you can see it's blocking a little bit now because it doesn't want to close so easy. But that's all there is to it to assemble that. Isn't that quick and easy? Um, and it's just a really fun camera. Now, when I go to attach this to the paper, you're going to do very minimal, or your card, really. You're going to do very minimal adhesive. All you want to do is a little bit here, a little bit here. And you might be able to put a little bit at the bottom, kind of at this point, not so far over here, because you don't want to block this mechanism at all. This lever has to be able to run. So I obviously can't put anything up here. That's going to create a blockage. And if I put something too close to the end here, my window doesn't open fully. And so for me, I had a very full image in there. I wanted you to see it all. So I have to be able to take my pull lever all the way to the bottom. If you had something smaller in there, you probably could put a little foam adhesive here, but you may be able to see on this, I have some there. So it's just to the side, not on the iris at all. Again, remember on the back, the back is pretty much sacred. You don't want to have any adhesive except on these three bars. And then I would use the Tombow um, to do that. So again, be very careful, but it's a fun, fun camera. So easy to do, so quick and easy. Um, if you're having trouble with irises, the one thing you may want to do is put together a sample and then just put it in with your dies. This is one that I did. I've got notes all over it that remind me how much of everything to cut. And then my support panels, instead of gluing them down on the top, I used Velcro. 
so I can pretty much take it back apart and kind of see what's going on there if I need to. So um, think about doing something like that. It's just one extra cut. Again, keep in mind the only pieces that you are gonna see in the end product, as you can see here, are these little bananas. So bananas, pattern paper is perfect, something that matches your project. They could still be white if that's what you want, but understand they're gonna show. And so maybe you want something a little different. Pull tab, the same way. The pull tab is going to show. Maybe your base one, you want to be white, but your cover-up, maybe something a little bit more decorative to go with your project. But once you get it done, it should open and close just very, very easily, just like you see here. If it doesn't, you may have something blocking, um, and you want to take a look back at it and figure out why that's going on. Because again, it's a pretty simple mechanism. Now we're going to go on and do this card, which I think is so fun. Again, it's got a pull tab that's going to bring up that instant photo. So we are using the same camera die from the Magic Iris camera add-on and the accessory pieces that we saw before. But there are some different pieces over in... Um, the add-on package for the instant photos. There's a different lens cap and cover. There's an instant photo frame. Again, this is pretty much the size of an Instax photo. So an Instax photo would fit very nicely in it. You can trim any photo to fit. You can color a picture. You can put words. You can put anything. The rest of the dies in the package are pretty much guide dies and dies that cut your slots to make the mechanism work. We have to bring back another old friend to make this work for us. And this is the Let's Toast pull tab. The pull tab, um, there was a cute avocado toast set that they introduced a while back and that we used um, the toast popped up out of the toaster, and so we use the die to do that. Let me just grab my pieces out here. They're all pre-cut, so you don't have to watch that piece of the action. Sometimes I think the demos run slow enough, but it's hard to get all the little pieces, parts together. But I've got another Yeti for this one. Um, the lens pieces, there's actually two of them. There's this outer ring piece that I can't quite get a hold of. And then the inner piece. I love how they have the little reflection pieces there. It just really gives a dose of reality. And I like that they think through all of those things. So we've got all of these pieces coming. I'm going to set that die aside for a minute. From the Let's Toast pull tab set. I need the basic pull tab mechanism and there's a support piece that's in there and that's pretty much all I need from that because everything else is covered in the Let's Toast pull add-on. So we're going to cut out our pieces first. We need a camera which I've got right here. Um, the camera does not have the slit in the top though. It's solid. You've seen it before. Um, and all the accessory pieces that go onto the camera. I didn't do a lot of decoration for this one because I showed you how to decorate the other. I'm not sure how much of that you really want to slash need to see. I'm gonna set my photo frame aside there and these two lens pieces. This is just a two by two piece I cut out because we've got to do something to block this hole so I can put my lens cap on. Otherwise, you just, you wouldn't have a place to attach it except the back of the card, and that wouldn't look quite right. So we're going to go ahead and attach that first. Two by two is pretty small, so I'm just putting adhesive at the corners, because this just fits over that. If you made it a little larger, which you're just cutting a piece using your paper trimmer, so there's no reason why you couldn't, um, you could put more adhesive on if that's troublesome to you. So there's my camera. The die set comes with two slot dies. 
they look like this. I'm gonna use the shorter one at the top of the camera to cut this slit that allows the picture to come out. So you want to do that after it's decorated. So um, on this card where I put the extra piece at the top to decorate the camera, I had to put that piece on first before I cut the slot. This one I'm not gonna decorate at the top. So we'll just go ahead and cut the slot. Now it's allowed to be there. Um, I'm gonna put my other camera decorations on really quick, just so they're in place and out of the way. Same as before, this is all marked. Um, it's the same die, so it's not, nothing's really changing for you. And a little bit of adhesive at the bottom. And I can put this little flash guy in place. And so that's about all the decoration I'm going to do with this camera. I need to go ahead and put the lens in place. And you can put your little bubble part wherever you want. Um, it's not really going to matter. It's fixed. It's not going to move. So you just use your regular adhesive for that. Then you can go ahead and put this little frame piece on. Um, I did think a little bit about maybe popping it with a foam adhesive, but well, I didn't. It might be a little bit cuter that way or to cut several of them out and just sort of stack them up to give a little dimension in this area. But for right now, that will work. Now we're going to, oh, let's put the picture together. Again, this is pretty easy. I do have my Yeti or not on the bottom of this one too. The thing is it only pulls up so far. So um, unfortunately we're missing the sentiment. So that's one thing that I need to do as I use this die is to figure out exactly what the parameters are so that I can more effectively put designs and sentiments on. And I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive to the edges here. I don't know exactly where my frame hits, but I know that there's not much frame here to hold on. So I don't want too much adhesive. I want to make sure and get this guy in straight um, if I don't. That's a little bit problematic too, so maybe I'll just do this from the back. And again, I cut the picture size, so I could have cut it a little bit bigger or a little bit different to fit it into the frame, but that's really all you want is to put your picture in. Again, photographs work coloring, whatever, whatever you have. You could even put a sentiment because it would be cute to have a happy birthday or something like that popping out of the camera. Um, so my camera, my photo are set. I'm just going to set these aside for a minute and work on my pull tab mechanism. Now to do this, I need my card piece done. Um, your card is going to be typically A2 size, so that's what I cut this paper originally is A2 size, so four and a quarter, five and a half. One of the pieces in this set is this little piece that helps you to cut this notch, and they do think of everything so that placement is not a problem. So all you do is place that and sort of butt it against the head of the paper. It should match the end down here. And you'd run it through this way and cut the notch. Then you have your longer slit left over. The longer slit is gonna be cut in the center of your paper. I may have it cut a little bit high here. I probably should have dropped it down just a little bit, but it's not going to make a lot of difference. I'm slightly off camera, sorry. 
um, it's not going to make a lot of difference in the end product. So this is what your background paper should look like. This is what we're going to take and attach to the card. Here's our pull tab mechanism from the Let's Toast pull tab die. We're going to go ahead and fold this. So the legs fold in and fold back. So there's kind of a Z fold going on there. So once again, the leg folds in and there's score lines for all of this. You can't mess it up and the leg folds back. And you end up with something that looks like this. We're gonna fold those two legs together like so, insert them through the slot in the card. I'm going to go ahead and slide it to the bottom, although positioning really doesn't matter at this point. You'll see that your pull tab comes straight up through that notch. And we are good to go. Your picture is going to be attached only to those feet down there. So um, when I attached mine, I attached it just a little higher because I wanted it. One of the things that can happen here is that the picture can actually slip underneath there. So it's kind of hard to retrieve it and then it's hard to pull it up with the pull tab too. So I tried to leave it so that it sat a little bit higher on the camera and came out. A little bit easier. The other thing that I'll tell you is this pink paper that I used for my pull tab wasn't quite heavy enough because it just feels really flimsy when I pull on it. So if you see me kind of pull or push on the picture, it's because I don't have a lot of confidence in my pull tab. And th again, that's my fault. In any event, I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on the pull tab or on the feet of this pull tab. I'm gonna leave like the bottom quarter of an inch empty because I'm gonna set this Yeti up a little bit higher too. You're just gonna center it on there, just like that. We can go ahead and we can cut off the excess pull tab. They make this long enough so that you can do what you need to there. So go ahead and cut that off. There's a cover piece that goes with it that looks like this. This is also a part of the um, camera add-on. It is not, there's one, a different one in the pull, sorry, the toast pull tab. It's confusing me. There's too many pull tab pieces. Um, but what you're going to do is go ahead and put adhesive on the back of that. There's a fold line on this as well. I just sort of crease that down a little bit. That tells me where to place it on the pull tab. I'm just going to get my Yeti out of the way there. and go ahead and fold this over the pull tab. So I know I've got some extra strength, at least on the end. I've got another cute little arrow that tells me to pull it up. This tells me when I set it like this though, that my Yeti is just a little bit too high because I can't hardly see that pull tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the Yeti back off. Come on, baby. Trying not to rip my pull tab, sorry. And I'm going to put just a little bit more adhesive and seat him just a little bit lower. So now I can see my pull tab sticking out from the top. And so when I bring it down, it's just slightly higher than the card, so I know it'll be okay and go through the envelope. Now we've got to flip this over and do something to stabilize this because we can't have this flopping all over the place. And that's what this piece is meant to do. It's got three different score lines so that you can fold it. 
I'm going to go ahead and fold on those lines because it's a little easier to place once you can see them better. This is going to go up near the top of the pull tab just to keep it in place. I'm going to put adhesive on the center section. And I'm going to put it underneath just against that slot because I want it at the very top, just like that. Then I can fold the two pieces in. I'm going to fold this piece, the smaller piece in, put some adhesive on it, and then fold this back around. Again, it doesn't have to be tight. It just has to be supportive. And I can see that my Yeti pulls up and down like he should. Now to go ahead and attach the camera to the card. Again, super easy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put foam adhesive at the four corners only. That's all I really need. Then I will go ahead and insert the picture in the slot just to get things started. Then I can stick this down, the camera down to the paper. And there comes Yeti. So another super, super easy card project. Um, again, these are really fun. So we started with the Magic Iris die. Magic Iris die is this one that gives us this closure on the camera window. We have the camera add-on, which gives us the camera body and all the cute accessories that go with it. Um, we have the camera add-on add-on that gives us this pull tab with the instant picture. And then we're using an oldie but goodie Let's Toast pull tab die to finish off and just get this part of the mechanism. So Lawn Fawn has a lot of interactive pieces and things that work together um, to get things done. These cute little palm trees that I decorated with are part of a palm tree border die, which is way fun. Um, around the holidays, you may have seen, there was a snow globe that works with the magic iris. Um, and then at the end of the year, in their Valentine's release, they came out with a birdhouse that coordinates with it. I was fortunate to see a preview of things to come. And I can tell you there's yet another Magic Iris accessory piece that's coming. And it's going to be a lot of fun, too. So this is a great die set from the Magic Iris on. Um, go ahead and get started with it. Again, if it's easier for you, follow the videos, follow mine, follow Lawn Fawns, and build yourself a sample Magic Iris that you can put in with your die set. And then you won't have to look all the time at how to put it together. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, once you get the hang of it, it won't be a problem for you again. So thanks for watching. Melissa has the dies in stock to do these. She has the cameras, the camera add-on, all the fun stuff. Be sure and stop in and see and see what's new this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.